Hello, I'm Chuck Phillips, South Alabama Home Inspections, and welcome to an edition of another Southern Home Talk. And so, what I figured I would do, I was going to try to do this all in one swoop, but if I was to do that, it may confuse some people, but not only that, uh, it can make too long of an episode, and I'm trying to keep these as short as I possibly can. And not only that, you may only be dealing with one of these particular styles of plumbing in your home. And so I figured I would start it off with uh, PVC and CPVC. Um, these are two products that, uh, they've been around a long time, but I didn't start seeing this uh, in houses in my area until the 70s, and that's rare, but mostly the 80s is when I started seeing this product the most. And especially with the CPVC, and I'll just go ahead and start out with that. Uh, you can see that this, this is a piece of PVC here, it's white. And this is CPVC, which is of a beige color. And it also has a different outside diameter uh, than PVC as well. And so what this CPVC stands for is chlorinated polyvinyl chloride. And uh, I believe this was discovered in the late 50s. I think there was a house up in Michigan that was a test house where this was plumbed in 1959. And so this was designed to... Uh, handle hot water and so I think it's rated for around uh, 200 degrees where PVC you cannot run or should not run hot water through this because it's real vulnerable uh, to hot temperatures you know that's what, what your water heater is going to produce so there's also different types of glues that are used uh, for these products as well and so it's important that you if you're gluing CPVC that you use a glue that states that it is also good for CPVC. Now, as far as PVC is concerned, especially, like I say, PVC, if, if I was plumbing a new home, uh, this is my favorite product. Of all the plumbing products out there, uh, PVC is my favorite one. And the reason why it is is because I was a plumber back in the 80s, and I rarely ever had any issues with this style of plumbing unless it was not installed correctly or they used, like you see here at the bottom, uh, that's real thin. Let me see if I can put up a thicker part of this. Let me just reverse this around. Okay, you can see it's thick there, but look how thin the one on the right is or however it's showing up in the camera. But this one here, Schedule 20, the, and the other one, this one there, is Schedule 40, which is twice the thickness. And so the only time this Schedule 20 should really ever be used is for like a drainage system for your HVAC system. But really, I wish they wouldn't make it at all. Because uh, what happens is, is this is a little bit cheaper, and they will install this product. And sometimes I have found problems just because this is so thin and it's more vulnerable to uh, failing as a result. So anyway, uh, the way they make, for the most part, most of your house is going to be plumbed in three-quarter and half-inch. That's what most household plumbing systems are plumbed with. And the way you would cut this is with one of these, but you can use a hacksaw to do it. And so uh, one thing you got to be careful of is when you're cutting this pipe is if you cut it too close to the end, it'll deform it or to crack at one or the other. So you try to want to cut it back as far as you can, but you can use a hacksaw for this. But if you use a hacksaw, then you're going to want to make sure that there's no burrs. You want to kind of clean that off and I could use maybe a piece of uh, sandpaper over here to do that. Uh, now, one thing is some people have, think that you have to sand this pipe uh, before you glue it and that's not necessarily so. I've never uh, done that but, the, but it does need to be as clean and also that's what the primer does too. The primer actually helps clean it as well as softens the pipe uh, for the glue and so there's a reason why this is called purple primer. It's, it's actually stained purple so you'll know the pipe's been primed. Now unfortunately uh, they make clear primer as well and so I have no way of knowing uh, when I'm doing a home inspection 
that the plumber didn't use primer because they do make this in clear. And so, and it's also not necessarily going to mean it's going to fail either that if it's not, if it doesn't have the primer. Uh, if the plumber uh, put enough glue on there and, and properly applied it, you know, there's, there's a probability that it'll probably be okay. But you can see I've already spilt some. And that's the reason why you want to use these gloves too uh, because uh, this has got some pretty noxious fumes and so I'm not wearing a mask like I should, especially if you're like under the house or you probably should, should wear that because those are some pretty powerful fumes that come off of that. But you can see how this stained this purple when I spilt some of it. And that's the reason I cracked these lids ahead of time because you got to work pretty fast with this product when you're using it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a little test uh, run with this so you can kind of sort of see how this works. So I'm going to... Uh, Put some primer on the pipe. And I tried to do this as much as I possibly can. You know, I know a lot of plumbers want to work fast, but I work slow and methodically because I don't want this stuff to fail. I mean, if it's done right the first time, incidentally, I've never been called back on any of the plumbing jobs I've ever done. And you also want to apply this primer on both the fitting and the pipe at the same time. They kind of sort of want you to do a secondary thing inside the fitting uh, prior to putting the glue in. So I guess, guess I go ahead and do that. They really kind of want you to do it twice for the for the fitting. So we'll do that because they kind of think it's better if if, you, if the glue actually goes in when it's wet. So I'm gonna put this there. I've already broke this free. That's another thing too. You may have to use a pair of channel locks to break these caps loose. And so. Uh, this is the glue here. For, it's also for, uh, this is a, a rain shine glue, so I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. So what you want to do is start off with the pipe first. You don't have to start off with the pipe first. This is what I do here. It's just what I'm used to doing. And then also take the fitting and put some glue in that as well. And then when you make this connection, you want to push it in, see how it pushed out, and you want to twist it just a quarter of a turn and hold it for about 30 seconds because if you don't hold this fitting in place, it'll push out. It'll actually push it off. Yeah, it sure will. And so, okay, I think it's going to pull out now. And so what we're looking at here at the end is actually a cap. And if you have PVC at your house or any other plumbing, I recommend keeping some of these caps on hand. Uh, just in case your plumbing fails, well, it's going to fail. It's just a matter of time before that happens. But it'd be good to have these on hand, you know, and have some glue on hand or whatever type of plumbing you have. You know, I would have some of that on hand in case you have to make a, an emergency repair. And that's why I have these too. So anyway, uh, this CPVC... Uh, goes, uh, puts, is glued together just like the PVC is. And so one thing I have found doing my home inspections is that they use the, this PVC uh, on the discharge side of the water heater and that's not correct. It will actually melt this. And so I'll call that out if I see it. And another thing too, uh, this CPVC, uh, it's kind of, it can get brittle, I mean, over time. And some of the manufacturers I've been told uh, have shortened the, the warranty on this to 10 years. Now, I've had it in my house uh, well, since the 90s, and I haven't had any problems with it. But there again, you know, a lot of this has to do with how it's installed. But it's also, you know, been reported to have uh, some fracturing because it does get old and it does get brittle as it ages, the CPVC does. Uh, I was a maintenance engineer for one of the local hotels in this area, and the entire hotel was plumbed with CPVC. And, you know, I mean, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But the problem was is that whenever you took a panel off to make a plumbing repair, you didn't know if you were uh, working with the hot or cold side because the whole thing was run, run that way. And I will say that they were having some problems with that CPVC at that hotel. 
And so it kind of backs up that what they're saying about this product. So I guess the, the long story short is, you know, if I was building a home, I would run all the cold water uh, with PVC. That's my favorite product. And I would probably maybe do the hot water side with PEX. Uh, that's just probably what I would do. Now, you're also going to have PVC inside the, for your drainage system as well. And that's what we're looking at. Uh, one side is four inch, the other side, well in this case is two, but most of your big drain lines in the home are either going to be four or three inch, and so I would say most are three, but you can also see a thickness difference with these two fittings as well. Uh, this one here on the, this one here is thinner, it's scheduled 20, and this is really used for uh, field lines. Now they should be using uh, scheduled 40 on your drain lines as well. And that's where I found problems in, in some drain pipes as well when I was uh, a plumber is they would use this instead of Schedule 40 and this would get egg-shaped and, and then the glue would fail. And so that's why I've had seen problems with that. So, I mean, you can get pretty much every kind of fitting that you need. If you needed to transition over to, uh, say, copper pipe or any other type of plumbing product, you can... Buy these glue fittings. This is what's called a female adapter, and this is called a male adapter. And you can thread those two together. So if, if this was going over to copper, well, then you could actually use one of these that are copper. And of course, I have just when I do the copper episode, I kind of show you some about some of that later. Uh, this is really what copper is. This is what most of the houses were really plumbed with uh, in the 70s. Well, yeah, I'd say 60s, 70s in 80s uh, was copper pipe and there's when I do my episode on this you'll you'll see some of the reasons why this can be a potentially bad product in some cases uh, but anyway I figured I would go ahead and do an episode with this here uh, just to show you you know uh, what CPVC and PVC is and if you have it in your home especially the PVC if it was installed correctly you know uh, chances are it's probably going to last a long time. And, but if you have the CPVC, well then that may be a little bit subjective, but neither one of these products uh, should be exposed to any kind of sunlight, not even ambient light, uh, because that will quickly degrade uh, this product and cause it to fail. And that's with either one of them. Now, what took the place of PVC, what most homes are now plumbed with today is this product here is it's it's uh, called PEX, and they make this in uh, A, B, and C. I'm not gonna get in all those different ones. And this has a crimp connection here, and it's use a combination crimp tool uh, to connect these. I've already done an episode on polybutylene, and this is what took the place of polybutylene as well. But just know that there, if this isn't installed correctly, it can fail too. So I'll do a PEX episode later on. I pretty much just wanted to go over, you know, uh, the PVC and the CPVC, uh, especially in the area in South Alabama. Uh, most houses, uh, this was really used mostly in the 80s. I've, I've seen it some in some 70s era homes. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the Schedule 40 and both the, the water supply and the drain side is a very good product and, and one I would stand behind and, and would continue to use today. Uh, hope this has been somewhat informative, guys. And uh, stay tuned to the next episode I have of copper and pets. And also look at the one I have on polybutylene. Take care, guys.